The harvest was the climax of the farming year. If the harvest failed, or the weather turned, it could lead to malnutrition and even famine. It's a lot of barley, isn't it? <laughs> it's a lot of work, but it looks amazing. Like yeah. the colour, it's just incredible. As one of England's largest landowners, monasteries owned vast amounts of agricultural land. Most fields were open and not enclosed by hedges, unlike today. So tenant farmers would be given strips of land to cultivate within these large areas. So I suppose as much as this would be a huge open field, we would just have this strip here, wouldn't we? And also probably another strip over there and another strip over there, but everyone would be growing the same crop and all be all hands to the pump. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's why school holidays take the form they do, isn't it? Because even students had to come out and do harvesting. Yeah. <laughs> we need bodies. The team are discovering just how backbreaking the harvest would have been for the Tudor farmer. Imagine how often we have to actually sharpen our tools. I mean, you think metal versus barley, it'd be an easy win, but it's not. Once it's cut, it needs to be bound into sheaves. Traditionally, it's the men who reap and the women who bind. So you run along behind the blokes, picking up all the loose stalks and then binding it into a sheaf. See, so much easier to control once it's bound like that. Every last grain from the harvest was precious. Even the smallest amounts would be gathered by those less well off, a practice known as gleaning. Well, for very poor people, it was a really important source of food. I mean, for anybody, that extra bit makes a difference, doesn't it? You know, if you think this is your year's crop, that little bit that's gleaned by the kids is the last week's food. Yeah. And you can get pretty hungry in that last week. But don't we know it? <laughs> <laughs> if it rained, then all the barley they had gathered would be ruined. To prevent this, the sheaves were stood upright on the ground, known as stooking, which allowed the grain to dry off. It is the most incredible amount of work. This tiny little piece that we've done of our strip, this has taken us four and a half hours to do. And look how much more there is waiting for us. 